Exciting news, ladies. You are officially invited. Yes, you. You're invited to join us in Fertility Awareness Mastery Live. This is my 10-week group coaching program designed to help you gain confidence using fertility awareness. Whether you're actively avoiding pregnancy or looking to optimize your cycles for conception, we have a spot for you. We start the third week of September. Are you ready to jump in? Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash fam, F-A-M, to register today. That's fertilityfriday.com slash fam. This is the Fertility Friday Podcast, episode number 379. Welcome to the Fertility Friday Podcast, your source for information about the fertility awareness method and all things fertility. I'm your host, Lisa Hendrickson-Jack. I'm the author of The Fifth Vital Sign and the Fertility Awareness Mastery Charting Journal. I'm a certified fertility awareness educator and holistic reproductive health practitioner with nearly 20 years of experience teaching women to connect to their fifth vital sign through menstrual cycle charting, balancing hormonal health, and optimizing the menstrual cycle without hormones. I'm outspoken about hormonal birth control and its impact on fertility and overall health because you have the right to know how your body works and how artificial hormones disrupt that natural process. I host live coaching programs to help you achieve optimal fertility and health because it's important to have healthy menstrual cycles regardless of whether or not you want to have babies. I'm also a wife and mother of two beautiful boys. I know, I know, I'm a busy girl, but I managed to fit it all in. This podcast is designed to empower you to take full control of your cycles, your fertility, and your overall health. And I'm so excited that you're here with us today. All right, so today I'm sharing another episode, the last episode actually in my summer series where I have been diving into the archives and sharing episodes that are really relevant right now and also episodes that I share all the time. And I think that this episode that I'm sharing with you today is the all time, like I share this episode the most compared to all the rest of the episodes. So even though the the episodes that I've shared within the series are definitely my some of my go-to episodes, uh, this one takes the cake. So today's episode is all about ovulation predictor kits for any longtime listeners. You have probably heard me talk about it if you've heard me on other podcasts. This is a really popular question that I get asked a lot, but certainly this episode is just as relevant today as it was when I first recorded it. And so um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right in to some of the most common myths about ovulation predictor kits and how you can make them work for you when you're trying to conceive. Welcome to today's episode. Today, I decided to come to you with a solo episode. This is something that I'm really excited to talk to you about today. It's something that comes up in every group program that I host. So I've been hosting a number of group programs, as you know. I just finished my last iteration of group programs at the end of June and It was a really incredible experience. I just feel so blessed to be able to connect with members of the Fertility Friday community in such an intimate way and to really get to know everybody. It's surprising after such a short time in some ways that you can really get a sense of the women that I'm working with. So it's really just an honor to be able to create this space for women to come together and be able to really learn and deepen their understanding of their menstrual cycles. But with that said... There's a certain topic that always comes up. It comes up in the Facebook group. It comes up in all the fertility awareness forums. I get questions all the time about it. And so today we're going to talk about it. (laughs) We're going to talk about ovulation predictor kits. And um, I'm going to share with you my take on them. And, you know, my my take has has shifted a bit over the years. So as I work with more clients who are using them in different ways, this has shaped my uh, view on them as well. And of course, coming from a fertility awareness educator perspective, I definitely look at them differently than, you know, most people would look at them. So there's a number of, (laughs) a number of topics I want to jump in with you today. And so basically, I just want to share with you some of the most common pitfalls when using ovulation predictor kits that I see. And these are pitfalls that can actually lower your chances of conception, which seems really counterintuitive. Like the purpose of using an ovulation predictor kit is obviously to predict ovulation and then time sex as closely to ovulation as possible. So you might be wondering, well, how is it possible that using an ovulation predictor kit could actually lower your chances of conceiving? And so there's a number of things that I've seen 
And a number of different considerations I think are really, really important. And ultimately, my foundational belief going into this conversation is that when you're charting your cycles with the fertility awareness method, and when you have a really good understanding of what's happening in your body, and you have a really clear understanding of your cervical mucus patterns, you know how to interpret them, and you know what all of that means. So when you see stuff, (laughs) you know what it means. When you have a really good understanding of how to confirm ovulation with your temperature, and when you have a really good understanding of what a healthy menstrual cycle looks like, then all of those things are really going to set you up for timing sex accurately. And that, in my opinion, should come first, and then ovulation predictor kit second. And so I'll talk about why I think it's much more, far more important to have a really deep and clear understanding of your cycle than it is to rely heavily on ovulation predictor kits. Because the way that I have always felt about it uh, as a, and you're taught, you know, as a woman coming from the perspective, so I've been charting my own cycles for over 15 years, you know, with that in mind, um, in some ways, I don't see the purpose of it. So in some ways, I think that there's no point. <laughs> and we'll talk about why that is. Um, but in other situations, I, I have seen and I, I do see how it can be beneficial. So we'll talk about uh, that a little bit. So the very first point that I want to talk about is essentially the like the crux, like the real big challenge for me about ovulation predictor kits. From the way I have seen it applied with my clients who use them uh, for the most part is that ovulation predictor kits encourage women to use rhythm method thinking. And so it's enforced if you're working closely with a practitioner who has suggested for you to use them and who has talked to you about how to use them. So part of the way that it enforces rhythm method thinking is the idea that, okay, so I'm going to use the strips and between this day and this day, I'm going to pee on the strips and that's going to tell me when I ovulate. So even what I mean by rhythm method thinking, so I guess I can back up a little bit and talk about what I mean by that. Rhythm method thinking, what that means is really getting into this idea that my cycles are basically the same every month. And all I need to do is figure out when I ovulate. And then once I figure out when I ovulate, I'll pretty much know when I ovulate every month and I can just time sex around that time. So this is when you start getting into the conversation of, I typically ovulate on day 15. And so I'm going to have sex around day 15 every month because that's when I ovulate. And so I have seen that type of thinking lower the chances of conception in my clients. And because they're taking actions based on this idea of when they're supposed to ovulate and they're making, because they've assumed that that's what's going to happen, they take that assumption and they pay closer attention to that than what's actually happening in their bodies. So I've seen women fully dismiss their actual physical signs of ovulation because of this belief that ovulation is going to happen on a certain day. And so I see it in the charts in a a number of different ways. So one of the ways that I'll see it in the chart is I'll see sex happen up until a certain day and then the sex will stop. Or I'll see kind of the observational routine happen to a point. For example, around ovulation, you would expect to see several days of mucus. And so based on that assumption, I've seen it where um, one of like a client, and I've seen this several times, so it's not just one client, but I've seen this where a client will have uh, mucus leading up to ovulation, but then they don't actually ovulate. And then, so there's then a couple of days of dry, but they assume they ovulated because of the day of the month and the temperatures are not lining up, which would indicate that you didn't ovulate, but they kind of dismiss that because, it, oh, but it's day 15. I always ovulate on day 15. And then they actually then have mucus again. So the mucus comes back, indicating that their body's trying to ovulate again. (laughs) But because they have already decided in their mind that ovulation usually happens on a certain day, they completely dismiss the mucus observations, don't have sex because they already had sex because they assumed that they ovulated on day 15. And then what happens is it can cause them to miss their fertile window (laughs) because the fertile window actually wasn't before because for whatever reason, your body didn't ovulate that time. And so now when you're seeing mucus again in this you know, example that I'm giving you that I've seen a number of times, they completely dismiss it in their minds because they thought they ovulated already. So the reason why that's important is because the whole purpose of the fertility awareness method is was never to get you to the point that you could predict when you're going to ovulate 
And because we were all trained with this idea that our cycles are always the same every month and that, you know, it's going to fall on a calendar and you can just predict everything, even though we try to use fertility awareness and we try to understand what it means, we still fall back into the rhythm method because it's comfortable. It gives us comfort. It's that thought of, I totally understand my body. And in your mind, that means I can totally predict what's going to happen. So I think with ovulation predictor kits, they encourage you to, to think that way because in order to use them, you basically have to start using them based on a certain date, right? And then you, you kind of use them and use them around this period of this window waiting for the positive to happen. And if the positive doesn't happen around that window, it can be frustrating and all these things can happen. But ultimately, it encourages you to really think about it in terms of what day of the cycle what day of the cycle should I start peeing on the strip? What day of the cycle does my ovulation fall on? And so for those of you who are listening and thinking, well, that's nice, but I always ovulate on this day. (laughs) What I can say is that over the years, seeing thousands of charts, um, seeing 15 years of my own, I can say that even for women that are super regular where their periods and their, you know, their ovulation typically does happen in a similar way, cycle to cycle, it doesn't always happen on the same day. And your body is just as susceptible as anyone else's body to the changes that, for instance, travel and stress can bring and different things. And so I've seen it so consistently that there's that that really and truly in order to maximize your chances of conception, you really want to throw the date part of the the equation out of the window. Like you want to literally take this whole concept of like I ovulate on this date and throw it out of the window entirely. And so there's a couple of reasons why you want to do that. (laughs) Um, One of the reasons is because in order to optimize your chances of conception, you're not going to try to have sex on ovulation day because that's not going to optimize your chances. Believe it or not, having sex on ovulation day and only on ovulation day is not the best strategy for optimizing your chances of conception. In order to optimize your chances of conception, you have to pay really close attention to your mucus observations and time sex in line with when you actually have mucus present. So this brings up me to another really, really important point about ovulation predictor kits, which is that ovulation predictor kits encourage women to ignore what's happening in their bodies. <laughs> it really sets up this dynamic where this technology that is external from myself is more accurate of a measure than what's actually literally physically happening in my body. And so let's talk for a second about how ovulation predictors kits work and what exactly it is that they're measuring. So ovulation predictor kits are measuring a hormone. They're measuring your levels of luteinizing hormone. So they're looking for an LH surge. An LH surge is not ovulation. (laughs) But the way that the hormonal cycle goes, as your estrogen levels rise, as you're reaching close to ovulation, as your, you know, as your eggs and your, the follicles in your ovaries are developing, producing all this estrogen, eventually your estrogen gets to the point where it triggers. So it sends a message to your brain and then your pituitary releases luteinizing hormone. And that is what triggers ovulation. So luteinizing hormone is released before ovulation, and that is what triggers ovulation. The whole purpose of the kit is to test for that LH surge. But with that being said, there are times when that is not reliable. So for women that have PCOS, for example, PCOS, one of the characteristics of it is an elevated (laughs) LH. So for women who who have PCOS, um, oftentimes they're getting positives that don't mean anything because their LH is high. And in cases of a double peak where your body is approaching ovulation, but for whatever reason backs off, perhaps because of stress or something else, you may actually have an LH surge that does not result in ovulation necessarily. And so what happens is that you completely ignore your body (laughs) um, or you at least are set up that way to completely ignore what's happening in your body and to really believe that the kit itself is going to tell you more than what your own body can tell you. And so from my experience, that's a really big problem. Ultimately, it's your body signs first and ovulation predictor kit second, because there is nothing more concrete 
than the cervical mucus coming out of your vagina. Like that is actually the most concrete measure of your fertility because cervical mucus is in line with your hormones. In fact, you could actually take a look at a woman's chart, especially if you're using a charting system that's very detailed and organized such that you're recording what you're seeing, how much you're seeing, what color, how much it stretches, how many times you're seeing it, you could actually take that detailed look at your mucus and you could put it up beside a chart of your hormones and they would match (laughs) because your mucus is a really clear reflection on what's happening hormonally in your body. So with that being said, if your body is doing something weird that month, For instance, if there's some sort of stress or something that delays ovulation, the ovulation predictor kit can't give you that complex information. It can tell you that you have an LH surge, but it can't confirm that ovulation actually did happen. Your body, you'd have to look at your body signs for that. You could pay attention to your basal body temperature. You could pay attention to your mucus. And so ovulation predictor kits then set you up for a situation where you no longer pay attention to your mucus and you're just paying attention to this this external marker. And so you might think, well, at least it's going to help me time sex with ovulation. And obviously, there are countless thousands of women who, with just the ovulation predictor kit, have been able to time sex for conception and, and conceive. So I'm not saying that there's no point for anybody or that they're not helpful. But what I'm saying is that your body is actually a better measure of what's going to happen. And From my perspective, I see when it can set you up to miss your window, essentially. And so that is why I see it as a problem. Because if, for example, if you get a positive on your ovulation predictor kit, and then potentially your ovulation is delayed for some reason, then you're not testing anymore because you already got the positives. So you, you know, you're, you, you had sex on those days and then you, you, you figure that you did the job and you're good for that month and you, you're no longer paying attention to what your body's doing. And it's possible because I've seen it a number of times that then you could, you know, you could have mucus a couple of days later and then you miss that because you just weren't, you paying any attention to your body at all. So the next point that I want to talk about is the other side of ovulation predictor kits, which I feel is a really kind of, I feel like it's a really big deal. So as I mentioned, ovulation predictor kits test for the luteinizing hormone surge. And so the way that your body works is, you know, once your estrogen levels rise to a certain point, that's what triggers your brain to release luteinizing hormone and trigger ovulation. And so that typically happens about 24 to 48 hours before ovulation. So about one to two days before ovulation. So when the ovulation predictor kit is like bang on and it's, you know, predicting ovulation, there's no disturbances and, you know, you just get the LH surge and it means you're going to ovulate. If you're waiting to have sex, you're waiting until that positive, then (laughs) the thing about your body is that before the LH surge, it means your estrogen had to be high for a couple days to trigger it. And when your estrogen is high, that's when you have cervical mucus. So by waiting for the LH surge, you're missing out on several days of peak quality mucus that are super fertile and that actually are the best time to try for a baby. Because the way mother nature intended it is that sperm live in your body for three to five days. And so you don't need to have sex on ovulation day in order to get pregnant. You need to have sex in your fertile window because mother nature keeps sperm alive in your cervical fluid and in your cervical crypts for several days before ovulation. The whole point, <laughs> the whole point of this whole setup is to extend the fertile window so that by the time your body is ready to release that egg, there's already sperm there and available and waiting to fertilize the egg. And so the this is huge. <laughs> I see it all the time. If you are waiting to have sex until you see that positive and you are completely ignoring your mucus and not paying attention to it and just putting all of your energy and faith into this predictor kit, then you are literally missing out on several fertile days each month. And you don't have a thousand fertile days each month. You only have about five to seven, maybe max. (laughs) So it's really, really important for you to pay attention to your mucus first and ovulation predictor kit second. If I wanted to optimize my chances of conceiving, I absolutely am not going to be waiting until an ovulation predictor kit tells me to have sex. Because 
in I've been charting my cycle for 15 years and I know I, I typically have several days of mucus before I ovulate. So I would be missing out on several days of peak quality, best time to have sex mucus. So it doesn't mean that I don't want to have sex on the day after the, the positive smiley. That's also a good day. <laughs> That's also a good day to have sex when you're trying to conceive, but you don't want to miss out on those other days. It's time, ladies. Time to take your fertility awareness, knowledge, and confidence to the next level. Just popping into today's episode to invite you to join us for the next round of Fertility Awareness Mastery Live, my 10-week group coaching program that's designed to help you unlock the secrets of your menstrual cycle. Fertility Awareness Mastery teaches you everything you need to know about using fertility awareness cycle tracking to achieve your intentions. Whether you're currently trying to get pregnant, avoiding pregnancy, or planning to conceive in the future, we've got you covered. This program goes deep. Get to the root of your period problems, hormone imbalances, fertility challenges, and so much more. Early bird registration is now open, but only for a limited time. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash BAM, F-A-M, to register today. That's fertilityfriday.com slash BAM. Now let's go ahead and jump back into today's episode. You know, one thing that I'll mention here is that in all the work that I've been doing with clients, as you know, on the podcast, I talk about sperm a lot. And so I've seen a lot of semen analysis by the, this point. And you want to really optimize your chances. You want to really make sure that you're utilizing those fertile days because there's really only like, let's say, you know, five days that matter <laughs> when you're trying to conceive. And for some women who, who have less, uh, fewer days of mucus, maybe there's less. And even if you have a ton more mucus than that, sperm really only live for that kind of three to five day window. So there's literally like five days that matter. And so if you're only having sex on one of them or two of them before ovulation, that is not optimizing your chances. That's actually minimizing your chances. And I've seen that happen when you're focusing so much on the ovulation predictor kit that you're literally having sex on like two days. And that's not the way to optimize it. In cases where your partner may have less than optimal semen, less than optimal sperm, yeah, you want to make sure that you're really optimizing those days. So another really important point that I want to, to mention is that ovulation predictor kits, they don't help you to understand your cycle better. So I feel like what they're doing is really simplifying what's happening. And by doing that, they're not giving you the opportunity to really look deeper into this issue and, and really take control of the situation. So by reducing what's happening in your body to just trying to have sex the day before you ovulate, that makes it seem so simple. And it encourages you, like I mentioned, not to pay attention to the signs that are happening in your body. And so essentially, there could be some really big things going on, some really big challenges that if you were actually paying attention to your menstrual cycle, you were actually charting your cycle, you were paying attention to, you know, your, the quality of your period, your pre-ovulatory phase, your follicular phase, what it looks like, you know, what your cervical mucus patterns are, what your luteal phase looks like. So there's so many different things that you could be focusing on that would actually make a really big difference. If you, there's so many different things that you can pick up on a chart. And so whenever I work with clients, there are always specific things that show up on their charts and we really get in there and work together to figure out if it's a problem, like what the root cause could be, what you can do to, to really address it and improve those parameters. And so when you're looking at your menstrual cycle as a whole, and you're really having an understanding of what's going on, that improves your chances of conception. Because if there's a really big glaring issue and you can identify it, then that gives you the ability to actually go in and fix it. And the, the reason that you're not getting pregnant, it, it, it's not necessarily so simple as, okay, I just have to have sex on the day before ovulation. It could really be something different. And if you're not paying attention to your menstrual cycle and really trying to get a sense of what's happening there, then that could make all the difference in the world. So yeah, so I'd say one of my biggest issues with it as well is that it doesn't help you to understand your cycle better. It really reduces it down to like, okay, have sex on this day and then everything will be fine. But there could be broader issues going on and all the while you're kind of focused on this external device. I think that also for women that 
in that same vein of um, doesn't help you to understand what's happening in your body. I think it's really interesting when I hear women talk about using these kits and saying, okay, well, I start peeing on the sticks on day eight of my cycle. And I always find that that is kind of this random (laughs) date thing um, that kind of goes along with one of the first points, which is the rhythm method thinking. I often wonder, well, why don't you just start using it when you start to see mucus? Because you're, you know, you're not going to see an an LH surge before you have several days of mucus. So, I mean, I feel like fertility awareness can inform the use of them, but at the same time, they can also make it so that you don't need them. Ovulation predictor kits aren't aren't necessarily inexpensive. And there's something that you have to kind of continue using, you know, um, several times. And especially for women that have longer follicular phases, that's like many, many days you could be having, or if if you have an irregular cycle, that's a lot of days of checking. And in my opinion, I may as well just be charting and paying attention to my mucus cycles. So ultimately, those are my my biggest points. So I'll just quickly summarize. Ovulation predictor kits encourage you to use rhythm method thinking. So they encourage you to think that you're going to ovulate on a specific day and you should start testing on a specific day. And they also encourage you to think that you should be trying to have sex on ovulation day to conceive, which is a myth because that's not the way to optimize your chances. They encourage you to ignore what's happening in your body because then you become reliant on this external device. So you get to the point where you think that this device actually is going to tell you more information than the information you could derive from your own body. When you're strictly using ovulation predictor kits, I've seen it happen a number of times. They can cause you to miss out on a number of your true fertile days. Because as we mentioned, the ovulation predictor kit doesn't turn positive until a day or two before ovulation. And by then, you've already had several days of peak quality mucus in a healthy cycle that you are missing out on entirely if you're waiting to have sex until this thing turns positive. Ovulation predictor kits don't confirm ovulation. So they're measuring for a sign that happens, typically happens before ovulation, but it is not perfect. That's another situation that I've seen a number of times where you get a positive, but it does not guarantee that you're going to ovulate 100% of the time. If you had a thousand women lined up and they all had little smileys, that that thousand women wouldn't ovulate. So there's a percentage of women who, even if they have the positive smiley, do not ovulate at that exact time. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. So because they don't confirm ovulation, if you're not paying attention to your body, you can miss your fertile window. And another important point there, ovulation predictor kits don't help you to understand your cycle better. So they detach you from what's happening in your body and there could be something that's really going on with your menstrual cycle. And if you're not paying attention to it, you're going to miss that. I guess that's the summary of my thoughts about ovulation predictor kits. Obviously, there's a lot more I could go into. I could talk about how to use them. But I feel like the women who use them have a pretty good sense of, of what their pattern is, what their habit is in terms of how they're going to use it. I think the the big broader takeaway is that, you know, ovulation predictor kits aren't good or bad. I think that There's a lot of women who benefit from them. And for a lot of women, this is kind of the first step into fertility awareness. That first realization, understanding that ovulation doesn't happen all the time and that we're not fertile all the time. And there's really only a small window. So I feel like it's a really good opener into this understanding of how your body really does work and really getting the sense that there is only a a short window of time in every cycle where it's possible for you to conceive. And so if you're able to identify it in one way or another, you are, you know, improving your chances of conception. I feel that there are shortcomings though. It's not inherently because of the ovulation predictor kit is on its own. It's really because of the way that we think about it and the way that we apply it. What fertility awareness charting adds to the equation is that increased understanding of what actually has to happen for me to conceive for you to have a really clear and detailed understanding of the, the very important role that your cervical mu- mucus plays in the equation, because it's so important to have that understanding that cervical mucus is what allows sperm to survive and you need cervical mucus to get pregnant. So if you are completely ignoring the fact that you have mucus on a couple of days because you're waiting for the ovulation predictor kit to turn smiley <laughs> or turn positive, then you're totally missing the point And I've seen it so many times. And so that is why I feel quite strongly that your body signs should come first 
and then the ovulation predictor kit second. And then it's like this glorious union, you know, like you're paying attention to your fertile days, you're having sex when you have mucus, and you can use this additional tool to really kind of get that little bit of extra information about when ovulation is more likely to happen. And that can help to inform some of your choices. So I feel like if you add it in, it can provide you with some extra information. But if you use it just on its own and you ignore the wealth of information that your body gives you about your fertility, then you're hindering yourself when you actually think you're helping yourself. You're minimizing your chances by only having sex on one of those days or two of those days instead of really utilizing that whole fertile window. So many of my clients find that after they really get a sense of their mucus and they get a really good sense of their fertile window, that they don't really feel the need to have the ovulation predictor kit anymore. I think for a lot of women, without that understanding of what's happening in their cycle, it really feels like they're just shooting in the dark and they have no idea which day is even close to ovulation. The ovulation predictor gives them at least, it's like like throwing up a white flag, like at least you have some sort of idea when this event is occurring. But I feel like fertility awareness allows you to take that to the next level because then you really have a clear day-to-day guide. So my mentor, Rosie Chuck, she uses this great analogy and she uses that whole idea of the rhythm method thinking and thinking about, well, I usually ovulate on this day and it usually happens around this time. She likes has said before that that is what she would call a weather forecast. So it's literally like when you turn on the TV or pull out your phone and you pull up the weather app and then it's telling you what the forecast is for the week. Well, we all know <laughs> that even though the weather forecast for like a week from now could be sunny that day could come and it could be raining. So thinking in terms of the rhythm method and using the ovulation predictor kit based on what happened last cycle and and really kind of detaching ourselves from what's going on is very, very similar to either looking at the weather forecast and just wearing clothes based on what the forecast said last week, as opposed to actually like looking out your window or going outside. (laughs) Because you can look to the forecast to see whether it's raining or not, you know, next week, Or you can just walk outside next week and you will know whether it's raining or not. And so in that way, fertility awareness charting is the walking outside because it doesn't really matter. In my opinion, (laughs) it doesn't really matter what that ovulation predictor kit says when you could literally go outside and see if it's raining or not. So then obviously the analogy is it doesn't matter what the ovulation predictor kit says because you can actually just check for your cervical mucus and see if you have any or not. And if you have cervical mucus, it means you're fertile. And if you don't, it means you're not. It's, it's very it's very straightforward. And so that predictor kit can say negative. It can say positive. It can say whatever it wants. But ultimately, what is actually the most reliable sign is whether or not you have mucus present that day. And then the ovulation predictor kit can help you to you know figure out closer to when ovulation is going to happen, but you want to make sure that you're not missing out on those key fertile days. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. You'll find the show notes page for today's episode over at fertilityfriday.com slash 379. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode throwback, but yet still just as relevant today. This is a conversation with I ha- that I have with so many of my clients. And like I said, when I interview on other podcasts, I get asked this question all the time. And so for the record, I am not anti-tech. I am pro-tech, but with the caveat that tech should be helping us to achieve our goals. And I do believe that it's most effectively used when we have a basic underlying knowledge. So when we first educate ourselves on how the cycle works and basic charting so that we can understand who, how to identify the fertile window with cervical fluid, etc., then ovulation predictor kits and any other tech can be added in addition to what we know, but not as our primary go-to for information. After all, tech is just that. It's technology. It doesn't have a mind and the ability to reason. And so it's programmed to give us a certain result depending on the situation. And it's really up to us to be able to interpret what that result means. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you also enjoyed the summer series, going back into the archives and really jumping into some of the the episodes I recommend the most that are still so relevant today, because this has been a lot of fun for me to put together for you. And so I hope that you've been enjoying it. So with that said, I hope you have a wonderful week, weekend, whenever you're tuning into the show. And of course, as always, until next time, be well and happy charting.